Greetings and welcome to the introduction to physical science. In this video, we are going to look at a couple things and we are going to talk about electrical current, how current flows through various wires. And one of the ways that we can calculate the current, the voltage and the resistance using Ohm's law. So we'll get started and get the very basics of circuits here that we will begin to look at in the next couple of lectures. So we can go ahead and get started. First of all, we want to look at the definition of electric current, which is defined to be the rate at which charge flows. So in the wire here, electrons will flow through the wire and how fast they charge, they flow through this tells you how much, how fast, what the current is. And the current uses the capital letter I, which is defined as the change in charge divided by the change in time. So it's a rate much like a velocity was a change in distance divided by a change in time. The current is a change in charge divided by a change in time. So how fast is the charge moving? And the SI unit for this is the ampere. So one ampere or one amp would be one coulomb per second. So one coulomb worth of charge flowing through a specific area in one second. Now we can go ahead and do a calculation with this as well. And let's go ahead and look at that. And we want to calculate what the current is involved involved is when a truck battery sets in motion 720 coulombs of charge in four seconds. So when we're starting an engine, that's the first part we're going to look at. And then secondly, we're going to ask how long does it take one coulomb of charge to flow through a calculator if the current is 0 0.300 milliamps. So there's two things we're actually going to look at here. Let's look at the truck battery first and we have our numbers up here. The change in charge is the 720 coulombs. The time is four seconds and the current is defined as the ratio of these two, the change in charge divided by the change in time. And we put those in and calculate and we find out that that is a current of 180 amps, a very large amount of current flowing to be able to get that truck started. Now we can look at the second part as well. And here we know that the uh, the, sorry that the charge is one coulomb and it is 0 0.300 milliamps so it's a very low current compared to the 180 amps we looked at before if we put those together here uh, we have the one we have that the change in time is equal to the charge divided by the change in charge divided by the current. And note this is just rearranging this equation and solving for the change in time. Well, the current we know, or sorry, the charge we know is one coulomb, and the current is 0.3 times 10 to the negative third coulombs per second. Now remember, we had to take 0 0.300 milliamps and convert that into amps. So that would be 0 0.300 times 10 to the negative third. Remember, one one th a milliamp would be 1 1,000th one of an amp. And we needed an amps in the SI unit in order to put it into the equation. And then an amp is just a coulomb per second. And that way we can see that the coulombs will cancel and our answer will end up in seconds 3.33 times 10 to the third seconds. So that gives us a little bit of idea, a little bit of the basics of current. And then we want to look at uh, the flow of a current. How can we represent that? And we're going to see different ways we can represent that. We can have a different types of diagrams that show this. So in the top, we see one way showing it and actual, you know, actually showing a headlight being attached to a car battery and showing how the current flows through into the light, lighting it and then back into the battery. There has to be a complete circuit for the current to be able to travel. The current will flow from the positive to the negative. So the direction of current. This is the direction in which positive charges would flow. 
So we always look at that. That's the way things have been defined uh, since we've been understanding electricity. That current goes from positive around perhaps through some resistance back into the negative. So in the case of this, this voltage here represents our battery. This resistance here represents our headlight. So this is our headlight here. And th in most cases, when we look at a wire, what's really flowing are the electrons or the negative charges. So this is really just kind of the historical definition. The electrons would then be moving in the opposite direction to the way we say the current flows. It's just a matter of how things have been defined from historical times before we realized that it was electrons that were actually flowing. We, we Then we did not know that. So that's why we have the definition kind of backwards here that things flow the current flows in the opposite direction to which the electrons actually move. So we can also look at what we call one of the other things we want to look at briefly is what we call the drift velocity. The electrons will follow random paths so they don't actually just flow through the wire zipping through the wire but they have an overall net velocity uh, in some direction in this case to the right in our image here and in the presence of an electric field the electrons will drift slowly at some velocity. It's very small about 10 to the minus fourth meters per second. So the, the electrons in the wire do not travel quickly. They do not travel fast they do not zip through the wire very fast. It can take them hours to travel one meter worth of wire. So the electrons in one part of your house, say down by where the electrical box where electricity comes into the house, could take many hours to actually make it up and away to a room a number of meters away. So if you had a room six or eight meters away, it could take a whole day for electrons to actually make it there. Of course, current, the, the electrons are constantly moving. So there's still electrons in there that are moving. But the actual electron velocity, the drift velocity, is really very small. The electrons are not just whipping through your wires when you turn on the electric, uh, electric power. Now, the other thing we wanted to study, the other uh, emphasis here, was going to be Ohm's law. So let's go ahead and look at what we mean by Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is based on two things. First of all, the first one here says that the current in a metal is directly proportioned to, proportional to the voltage applied. So current I is proportional to the voltage. We also know, secondly, that the current, so this is number one, this is number two, that the current is inversely proportional to the resistance. So if something is proportional to it, that means if the voltage increases, then the current will increase. They will work in tandem. They will one increases, the other increases, or if one decreases, the other decreases. In the case of inversely proportional, if the resistance increases, that means the current decreases. So when they are inversely proportional, they work opposite to each other. And we can put these two together to get Ohm's law. I, the current, is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And we will be using that quite a bit. We'll do an example of it here in just a minute. And we will look at some of this. We will be using it over and over over the next couple of lessons. So let's go ahead and uh, look at resistance here for a second. And what we have, these are examples of resistors. And the resistance is measured in a unit called ohms, where one ohm is one volt divided by one ampere. And we can see there are different resistors here. You notice that there are different bands. The different bands are color coded to tell us how much resistance is within that resistor. So you can look up exactly what the color coding means. Uh, we don't need to worry about it for the purposes of this class, but we can you could look up exactly and figure out how much resistance this actually has. So they all have differing amounts of resistance based on those banding structures. All right, the other last thing we wanted to do was to look at one problem, an Ohm's law problem. And what we want to find is what is the resistance 
of an automobile headlight through which two and a half amps flows when 12 volts is applied. So we know the current two and a half amps. We know the voltage 12 volts. And we can then go ahead and put our equation up. We know that Ohm's law says I equals V divided by R. If we solve that for R, we find that R equals V over I. And we can then put in our values that we had. So we know that the current is two and a half amps. We know that the voltage is 12 volts. And if we divide those two, we then find that the resistance is 4.8 ohms. So we can use this if we're given two, we're given either current voltage or resistance. If we're given any two of those, we can then figure out what the third one is. We just may have to rearrange our equation as we've done in the past to solve for what we are actually looking for there. So let's go ahead and finish up as we do with our summary. And what we've looked at in this lecture is electrical current is the rate at which charge flows. So the rate at which charge is, charge is flowing, for example, through a wire. We talked about the drift velocity, which is how fast the electrons actually move through a wire. So how fast they are actually moving through the wire, that is the drift velocity. And that is very different from the current. And Ohm's law relates the current voltage and resistance in an electrical circuit. So that concludes this lecture on electric current and Ohm's law. We'll be back again next time for another topic in physical science. So until then, have a great day everyone, and I will see you in class.